This video is a story about the time I was invited to a country that I didn't know existed. A country that my friends and family didn't want me to visit because it was too dangerous. A country that was in a war at the end of 2020. Not 100 years ago, but a few months ago. I just turned 18, and here I was, presented with an opportunity of a lifetime. But it wasn't as simple as that. I spent hours researching the country, its history, its politics, its culture, its people. But I still felt afraid and nervous to go, questioning if it was safe or even ethical. But why? I had thousands of questions racing around my mind. What does it mean to be paid to visit another country? What is my responsibility here? How do I not get involved with the complicated politics? How do I get over my fear of something going wrong? Very wrong. I grew up in the United States. Our students have been given an oversimplified view of the outside world and a fear of many countries, people, and way of life. But maybe I could change this. Maybe with an optimistic perspective, I can go out into the world and see what it's really like. Maybe I can break through the media headlines and share true stories from the people living there. Welcome to Azerbaijan. Okay, so it is 7.16 now. So this is a trip, I don't know if I mentioned this, but with a bunch of other people, vloggers, uh, journalists, but yeah, we're all meeting downstairs to go on the trip in about 30 minutes, and I'm gonna also try to get breakfast down there because I'm hungry. On the tour, there are two Americans, two, and I might be pronouncing this wrong, two Uzbeks, two Kazakhs, two Turks, two Swiss, one Pakistanian, one Algerian, one Portuguese. It's just fascinating to be with such a diverse group. I've been in the United States for close to two years now, so <laughs> it's a bit of a shock to be in another country again. Ah, oh, I just forgot how like alive travel makes you feel everything. First you gotta see if all the stuff will fit. I know my room might not be minimalist, but my packing is second coffee of the morning. Mm. Probably open that first. So, Isaac, are you taking your lunch here? Or? I'm taking it with me. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, I think that's it. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. out on a five-day tour around the country. We'd be visiting restricted previous war zone areas that even Azerbaijani citizens didn't have access to. Areas full of landmines that Armenia hadn't given the maps to. Bolts and missiles scattered around, blown up tanks on the side of the road, and uniforms left on the ground. The one thing was, I didn't know any of this was coming. In 2007, this preserve was enlisted in the UNESCO's World Heritage Site list. You can try. First time on TV, what'd you think? Uh, it was pretty cool, man. Who would have thought it would be in Azerbaijan? I know, right? <laughs> Keep my pants. <laughs> yeah, I got the message, thank you. Okay, okay. Yeah. I have some tea, on the news. some snacks. After our lunch at the Gubasan Rock Art Cultural Landscape, which holds 6,000 rock carvings, some dating back over 20,000 years ago, we were headed across the country to visit Ganja, the third largest city in Azerbaijan. This would be the first time I saw destruction from the war. It tastes like a crepe and really buttery. That's really good. Alright, we just got to Ganja. There's a bunch of local TV stations filming us. And we're here looking at the ruins. It happened during the 44 days war, uh, the residential area, the uh, ballistic missile. Here. And the civilians living here, they were killed. The interesting thing here is the juxtaposition between, you know, this used to be uh, a kindergarten and it was bombs, and then over here it looks to be like a new playground and there's kids playing, and yeah, it's interesting to kind of see the divide between tragedy and then, you know, people living on, continuing their lives, and happy kids still being able to play nearby. But it's definitely eerie to see this destroyed right here. I'm actually kind of curious to see what an Azerbaijani playground is like. Hi. YouTube, yes. 
<laughs> yeah, I remember when I'd spend summers in Paris as a kid, they'd have these like little circles that you sit in and you spin and your momentum gets you going really fast. You didn't have those in America. Yeah, it's just interesting to go in different countries and see little cultural things and just the subtle differences that they have. Even the types of seats for the swing sets look very different from America. Like you put your hand in this. But yeah, little differences are what really make traveling interesting because that really sparks new ways of thinking. Hi. You want to be on video? YouTube. YouTube. Hi. Nice to meet you. What's your name? You cafe. You cafe? Vlog, vlog. What's your YouTube. name? Max. YouTube. What's your name? My name is Max. Uh, YouTube. My name is Erus. Erus? Erus. 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 What's your name? YouTube Eruzi. channel. Uh. Max Rising. Max Rising. Yes. It is video. This is this right now. Rus is Vlogs. Rus. 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 You speak English very good. Maybe you will speak for me. Yeah. Okay, speak. What's your name? Uh -huh. What's your name? Your name? Yes, uh, yes, Amin. 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 <laughs> Hello. What do you want to say? Visit Azerbaijan? Burdan Azerbaijan Yakshoklam Nana Salamot. You heard him. Yes? You, me, money. Yes. YouTube canal. Yes. Bye. After running on pure excitement all day long, we arrived at our last stop of the day, the Goyaman Mosque. This will be the first time I've ever been inside a mosque. I didn't know what to expect, or more importantly, what to do or how to act. Was it disrespectful to film, to speak inside, or to have my shoes on or off? These little questions raised through my mind as I was struck by the pure awe of the commanding beauty that this mosque Look. had. Wow. It's gorgeous. It's just such a grand structure. It's crazy being in front of something like this. You're just in awe. We're about to go in. Shoes off. Such a grand, giant building. And a massive chandelier too. This is so cool. The first level uh, was built in the 9th century. It's the grave itself. So I learned that this is worshipping for the men in the building I was in earlier. This giant hall is worshipping for the women. Dualiram, bütün milletimize, halkımıza, Allah hiç bir çese, hiç bir halga millete zelzele velvele yangın, daşkın, gırgın kısmet ilemesin. Tam bir koşmaklı kısmet ilesin. Tam burası Dualiram, Allah amanında geliriz. Çok sağ ol. Çok. Oh wow, the sun is coming back out. It stopped raining. We got a very nice welcoming or parting message. Um, saying that he wishes us all happiness and that we're young and that we might not all believe in the same religion but we're all under and from the same God and that yeah he's just wishing us all the best and the, all the happiness that we deserve and just a very nice very nice message Alright, we're at the hotel. Oh, check this out. Beautiful, beautiful. Wow. Alright, so I just gave them my passport, which is a weird feeling to just give someone your passport. Yeah, I got my room key. 14. Oh wow. Alright, I have to find it first. <laughs> Dude, are huge. Really? <laughs> no way. That is like a weird little like glass box that it's really Wow. 
Day one was over and somehow I seemed to forget about all my original fears. The people living here were normal people living their lives, no different than you or I. They were kind, welcoming, and open to conversation, something that I don't even always experience at home where I live. But how could this be possible? I thought this place was supposed to be scary and full of danger. That's the image the media headlines created in my mind before coming, and the reason that I almost didn't travel here. But it was slowly coming undone as I met more locals, saw the landscape, and witnessed the day-to-day -day life of the Azerbaijani people. Maybe this place wasn't as extreme as I thought it would be. Maybe it wasn't even that different from where I live. But it was only the first day of the trip, and it wouldn't be fair to come to any conclusions yet as there's still much more to come. Thank you for watching, and have a great day. <laughs> this video is sponsored by Skillshare. Let's pretend you're in your shoes for one minute here, and you just watched this video and felt inspired to create your own YouTube channel. Let's also say you have no experience with making videos and you have no idea where to start. You then decide to begin your one month free trial of Skillshare by clicking the link in my description and taking this course by Marcus Brownlee. You, alongside close to 25,000 other people, learn the fundamentals of how to plan a video, how to shoot compelling content, how to edit your footage, and then how to grow your own YouTube channel. But what if you don't want to start your own YouTube channel? Maybe you're more interested in photography, art, business, animation, music, web development, productivity, marketing, or just about anything creative that Skillshare has on their platform to learn about. Well, the good news is that the first thousand of my subscribers that click the link in the description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare so that you can start exploring your creativity today. Thank you again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. I'll see you guys in Perspectopia. Bye.